Hi all, um, thanks Bram, thanks for the opportunity. Um, quite impressive to be here. Um, so yeah, as Bram told you, uh, I will talk to you about uh, our dream mission, uh, Santa Cruz mission to Titan Circuit with a return ticket. Um, this uh, this uh, project was conducted and the mission was conducted with these uh, five members I'm representing today, but they unfortunately weren't able to, to, be, to, to be here with us today. Um, before diving into their dream mission, I would like to have a few words on the origin of this crewed mission to Titan. It all comes from uh, a larger initiative called the SEEDS program. Uh, well, uh, 30 students throughout a six month study project uh, thought and designed a large uh, exploration program towards Titan. And the crewed mission is actually only a, not a small part, but only a small uh, part of this large and in depth idea and program to go and, and, and see Titan uh, from close. Okay, um, I think we can, we can go in. So before even considering going to Titan and saying okay, we want to send people there, uh, the first question we need to ask ourselves is like why we want to go to Titan. And in our perspective, we believe that um, Titan is a, is a perfect like, middle ground between two celestial bodies we know very well. Uh, first one is the Earth, with which it shares some very unique features, um, talking about uh, dynamic atmosphere with layer atmosphere cushions. We have a shielded natural shield, uh, from, sorry, natural shielding from cosmic and solar radiations. Um, we have an environment on the on the surface which is liquid cycled, and the size is not very far from a small size solar system planet. Um, and additionally to that, uh, we have some specific features also with the moon. Uh, the temperatures on both the moon and Titan are very extreme. Uh, the gravity is quite low, uh, the local day is also very extended, um, but also we can find some water in the form of ice, both on Titan and on the Moon, or at least that's what we believe. And um, the landscapes are pretty much similar, rocky but various and very interesting. Of course Titan is a middle ground, but Titan also has some spe very specific features of its own. Um, even though the atmosphere is dynamic, uh, its composition is very unique, methane based basically. And uh, we have also a very large amount of hydrocarbons on the surface on liquid formats. Um, the enlightenment also is very low, uh, from 10 to 100 times lower to what we have on the Earth, uh, depending if we are in the orbit or on the surface of Titan. And one of the main problematic, if I may say, feature of Titan is uh, the very distant locations to reach. Um, but actually, I would like to spend some time talking about this very distant location. So of course, in average, Titan is 1.2 billion kilometers out from the Earth. Uh, it represents eight astronomical units, the distance from the Earth and, and the Sun. But actually, it only represents 60% of this distance from the Kuiper Belt, a probably, potentially very interesting place to go in the future. And if we think about going beyond the solar system, this distance only represents 0.004% sorry, of the distance to the old cloud, what we consider today the limit of our solar system. So let's imagine now that Titan is out, is out of reach for us, like as the moon might be. Then what is the potential of, of Titan? Well, we believe if we reach and we manage to go as easily as we go today to the moon, to Titan, we might actually access all the rest of the solar system and maybe beyond. And to give you an example, I will put out some perspectives and some numbers for the moon and Mars, but I will not talk more th further about that because I think I had a very interesting presentation this morning about the role of the moon to go reach Mars. That being said, in a general way, we believe that Titan is the next moon in a far future, of course. It is also far more hospitable and habitable than the moon, and it's a perfect springboard for us to reach the rest of the solar system and even maybe beyond. Okay, so, why Titan is answered now basically is how do we go there? And in our field, when we say why, how, we have to ask the questions what? What kind of mission can we build to go and reach, in first instance, Titan? Everything starts with, of course, a mission and mission objectives. And we thought about four main objectives. Discover, explore, sustain, and inspire. We want to discover, of course, we want to put some extensive science research on ground to look for life because Titan is one of the most uh, interesting and uh, highest potential of life uh, celestial body apart from the Earth in our solar system. We want to explore, of course. We want to set the first ground and first bricks to an infrastructure which might bring us later beyond the solar system. We want to sustain in the same way and inspire. We want to unite society and bring them together to a complex and challenging um, 
mission <laughs> and goal. Uh, we talked about culture and, and, and reasons to go to explore. This might be a very good reason to go. Now that the mission objectives were set, we were able with our team of young engineers to set some the ground basis of this mission. The mission statement is, you already know it, we want to spend a crew mission to Titan and return them back. We want a mission time frame, which is far away from us now, but not th that too much. We want to expect the launch around 2060 to be realistic, but not too far away, so not too science fictionary. Um, and the main design drivers we started with are the following. We want this time frame I just presented to you. We want the mission to be crewed, of course. Uh, we want to minimize as much as possible the delta V, because you will see later it's quite high. And one of the things we started with is the idea that we want to refuel from the moon orbit. Um, and this basically first element allowed us to design a spacecraft with six key design inputs. We want the spacecraft to host six crew members in a habitable volume and in a crew module of 186 cubic meters, uh, supported with an ECLS system, so an envi environmental and control life cycle system, which is semi-regenerative. We want to take into consideration the human factors. We want to shield the spacecraft from uh, external radiation with passive water. And we want to make use of uh, artificial gravity thanks to centrifugal rotation with a rigid arm. Um, before I go more into details with our design missions and our spacecrafts, I want to take some time to talk to you about the mission, the mission plan, which came up after we did some extensive mission analysis work with the, with the crew, with the, with the team, sorry. So basically our mission is decomposed in five, uh, nine specific phases. Uh, we launch the modules for assembling the spacecraft in orbit. Once the assembly is done, we go through the moon. Where on the moon we will both crew them, uh, we will board the crew and also refuel, as said just before. And once we are ready to, uh, to board and to leave and to go to Titan, we will perform a 3.5 years transfer to Titan orbit, going through Jupiter for a passive flyby for a total delta V of 13.1 kilometer per second. Once we arrive on Titan, we will meet with the automatic cargo which was sent previously, and then we can start the mission of 201 days, approximately seven months of surface missions on, on Titan. Once this mission, once this uh, period is over, we can finally go back without transfer to Earth orbit for one, also 3.6 years and a total delta V of 12.6 kilometers per second. The entire mission plan lasts 7.7 .7 years. And the total, total delta V, for those who are a bit knowledgeable of mission analysis, is quite high, 26.6 kilometers per second. For this presentation, I would like to only focus on the first six phases, which are by far, I believe, the most challenging and the most interesting. We call it the journey to Titan. And throughout the journey, I would like to present you one of the key, um, the key features, the key developed system we had to put up and to put on shape for the spacecraft to be, um, to work basically, to be accessible. Um, and I think we can go with the journey to Titan. Um, first thing first, as I said before, the assembly around the Earth. We have here a spacecraft, which I would like to present you in general, of around 100 meters for total weight mass, hold on to your seats, of 5,222 tons. The spacecraft is composed of a crewed module, a support system, a fuel storage system composed of four stages divided in two tanks each, and a propulsion system assembled in, on earth, in earth, used for propulsion of course, but also for pro provision of power generation throughout the, thru, throughout the mission for the entire systems. Once we have, once we have, sorry, assembled the, uh, the, the spacecraft on the Earth orbit, we're ready to go. And we first go through the moon to finalize the refueling and to board the team. Talking about the team, I would like to a bit talk to you about how the way we size the team, the way we selected our, space, our astronauts. To do that, we call it this crisis, this, we call this, this the crew sizing approach. So it remained on three main drivers. We have a one person per man role, which is very important for that. We want to have some redundancy on the main role, so secondary role assignment. And we want, again, to take into consideration the human psychological factor. This helped us to uh, size a crew of six members, composed of three scientists, two engineers, and one head medic. And with that being said, I would like to present you our teams that will go in the future to Titan. Oh, okay. I believe one of the transitions are missing. So we have Isabel, head medic, Mike, our biologist, Anthea, mission commander, Sato, engineer, Sanvi, astrophysicist, and Carl, geologist. 
The team is going to be going to board on a crew module, uh, and the design phase of this crew module took into, took into, took into consideration uh, five uh, system designs. Uh, the crew sizing, as said just before, it's presented there before, the radiation shielding, the psychological requirements, uh, the design of the ECLSS system, and the design of the gravity system. Those five uh, system designs conducting in parallel provided us with this amazing rigid body crew module of 186 cubic meter of habitable volume divided in four levels uh, based on uh, physical chemical methane based ECLSS system providing 15 square meter of greenhouses for complementing the ECLSS system but also providing some psychological additional factors. We want to rely on water shielding and the total mass of all this huge and amazing crew module is 250 tons. Once the crew is boarded and the, 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 the ship is, is refueled, we're finally ready to go for our 3.5 years of transfer from the moon going by Jupiter up to Titan. And I want to take this moment and this long journey to talk to you, both, talk to you about some additional uh, systems we designed for this, tra this, tra this transport. The first one is the propulsion system design and, and the way we did it. First of all, to design this propulsion system, we went for a technological trade-off. Basically, we had to think about how and what we need and what would be best for us for our missions and with the constraints that we have to get a, a nice and proper and adaptive propulsion system. Once this trade-off was done, we conducted five parallel system designs, the engine design, the budget analysis, the shielding requirements, and the staging optimization. And this gave us this amazing bimodal multi-stage nuclear thermal reactor uh, able to produce up to 200 kilonewtons of thrust with a specific impulse of 1,000 seconds propelled with liquid hydrogen for a propellant mass up going up to 4,640 tons and with a temperature which is goes up to 3,000 Kelvin during propulsion phases. While we're not yet arrived on, on Titan, I would like to present you one last very critical system. Uh, it's the artificial gravity system. So this one is very important and it's quite challenging today to consider an artificial gravity system. But yet, considering the amount of time we're supposed to travel and the, the, the extensive time of the mission, we cannot go, well, we believe we cannot go without it. Uh, to do that, we considered two uh, inputs. Uh, the crew medical requirements of the team and the mission constraints. That gave us three uh, figures uh, to, to, to compute and to come up with. Uh, the acceleration magnitude we want, the dosage of artificial gravity and the angular rate for our system. And this helped us come up with this uh, rigid arm fire-baton type uh, artificial gravity system with a variable center of gravity uh, with a rotational arm going from 36 to 75 meters up, able to go up to a 1G artificial gravity acceleration but with a maximum rotation per minute of five. And now that our mission is already, is finally reaching Titan, uh, the crew in the same time, in the meantime, oversees Titan for the first time after 3.5 years of travel and is finally ready, ready for them to start uh, their dream mission. Well, thank you very much uh, for listening to me. I would like to have some special thanks to SGSC uh, the uh, Academy de l'Art d'Espace, Seeds 12, of course, and Victor Fritsch, a concept artist. You have to go check what he's doing. It's incredible. If you need anything, ask me on my email. Thanks a lot.